Hey everybody, we're here. NHL episode five for talking hockey podcast. I'm here with Caps. He's the captain of the show. Hi, Caps. Okay. You can't say hi to yourself. Mike, ba- Mike Babcock reference. Talking to yourself nice. in third person. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll accept it. All right. So I'm gonna start this episode episode off with um, Mika Zabanajed, who has 26 points this season. 14 of them are against Philadelphia. Okay. He has two six point games against Philadelphia this season. And I believe it said that he was the first player ever to have back to back six point games against the same team in one season. For the viewers that don't know who exactly who he is, why don't you just give him like a. He's a center for the New York Rangers. Right. (laughs) <laughs> would that help you? What do you do? You do? Don't you think that's crazy? <clears throat> is Panarin still playing, or is he gone? He came back. He came back. He did come back. Come back. Are he, they on the same line? I don't know. Um, I, I didn't check lines, but I believe they would be because I'm pretty sure Zabanajet is the first line center. Because like that would be like if Panarin if, was on the same line, that would be a huge contribution to why. Uh, but the he's first been so successful. The first game. <clears throat> Uh, I don't. I don't even think Panarin was there the first time he got the six points. I think that was okay. when Panarin was off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But either way, it really you, got rocked, man. <laughs> yeah, if they got rocked. They lost nine nothing the first game. Yeah. If you take out those fourteen points from Zabanajed, and I think it was, I think it's over four games. I believe it was four games. He got uh, fourteen points. Mm-hmm. He only has um, twelve points in in. Well in 23 games that's that's pretty like a huge difference maker just those philadelphia's giving him all his points good on him i mean like how are the rangers doing like they're making a comeback i making a comeback i I still do not think that they are a good team um in terms of going somewhere i i think on paper their team is pretty solid but i don't think they're ready to sorry excuse me they're ready to win yet well, time will tell, man. How's uh, the rookie doing? I can never pronounce his last name. You know what? That's funny. Uh, hold on. Give me a second because uh, I, I haven't looked at him at all. But uh, I know that I'm, I'll stay on Rangers for now while I'm doing this. So the the score released um, the their rankings for who they think at this point is going to win the Norris Trophy. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so the three, the top three, well, number one is Samuel Gerard of Colorado. Uh, number two is Hedman. And number three is Adam Fox from the Rangers. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, I mean, Hedman has always been up there. Uh, good on the other two. I, I had, you know, I mean, um, I really don't have much else to say on those other two, but yeah, on them. Uh, so he has nine points in 32 games, Alexis Lafreniere. That's, which yeah. he he's not in for points. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of development to do. Uh, to points wise, he's not even top ten in rookie points. Really? Wow. Well, he only he has nine in 32 games. I, I'm pretty sure Ka- uh, Kaprizov is his name has like 25 points. He it's okay. between it's between him or the goalie on Minnesota. Him or Kakinen are gonna win the. Calder, why can't I close this stupid internet? Anyways, that goal is is the front runner. Yeah, I think so. Well, you know what? I have him in the in the pool, and he has not been playing uh, lately. The last, I would say, over the last seven games, he's only played twice. So it's it's. Uh, I don't know what. Maybe the other guy's hot. I don't even know who their backup goalie is, to be honest with you. But um, they got nothing to lose anyway. It's like you're just going to play whoever's hot anyway. The fact that they're this good is already shocking because me and you at the beginning when we did our rankings, we had Minnesota nowhere near making a playoff spot. Yep, yep. And yep. so good on them. They they That rebuild was fantastic. And it's I give going. them credit. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're, they're not even close to being done. It's still no. going. I and mean, they have them, a few pieces in the pipeline. The Sens, so. they, they have a lot of uh, work to do still. The Senators on paper <clears throat> are a better team already than Minnesota, but they're just not playing to that potential. They just don't have a goalie. Well, Matt Murray is a good goalie, and the, no, he's the, yeah, he is. He's, no, he's not. Yes, he, who's right be- now Fors- Forsberg is playing better than him. So yeah, no, and Forsberg I, I is also a good goalie. 
I would actually say that Forsberg is a good goalie, but Matt Murray is not. What do you based, have based on what I've seen this, this season, this year, this season, yeah. he's not that great. I'm that's sorry. fair. If you're gonna say this season, that's fair because if you're gonna say career, you have nothing to back that up because Forsberg hasn't played at all until now. It doesn't matter what he's done in his career. I'm talking about now. Matt Murray has if, two Stanley Cups. Great, good for him. Is he winning right now? No. So the whole Saints team is not winning. They don't have a shot, anyways. Why? Either got way, five, you have. The, okay, but you just said wait, they wait, have no goalie. Wait, wait, goal wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if you look at all the Can- the Canadian division right now. The Sens have gotten the most points out of all the Canadian teams in the last week. Yeah. Yeah, five points. Everybody else is like four, three, two. The Flames have the least. Yeah, but they, I believe the Flames and the Leafs both only played two or three games this week, and Ottawa played like five. Hey, but the okay, I'm, getting, I'm just saying. The Sens are no, getting points. They're I'm not disagreeing with you on that. My my point is at the beginning though you said they don't have a goalie and now we're both arguing over a goalie so they do have a goalie. I do. I, they do have a goalie. His name is Forsberg, not yeah. Matt Murray. Matt Murray's good. Uh, he's, he's not. not he's not an elite goalie. We he's agree to disagree. Goalie. We no, agree we're not disagree. disagreeing. You're are, okay. Well, listen. Okay. Is he a, is he a starting goalie in the NHL? Who? Matt Murray. No. So well, you're crazy. right now. No. Right now. No. At, at, on this very week. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Right now, that. he's not playing like a starting goalie. I'm sorry. Anyways, back to my uh, Norris Trophy talk. I think that I personally think Hedman's going to get it. Yeah, I mean, like you got uh, Kucherov came back and uh, somebody else came back too. So overall, that team is going to perform and it's just going to make Hedman look even better. He he's been he got dogged for the the Norris Trophy like four seasons in a row. And yes, yeah. last year they won the cup. I think even if they just gifted to him this year for screwing him over for so long, I wouldn't even be mad about it. But he is leading the league in points. And the over the last 20 years, it's been extremely favorable to the guy with the most points, the Norris Trophy, over yeah, who's actually the best defenseman. And he does have the most points on top of being probably the best defenseman. So uh, I'll say him. Well, wasn't it that Washington Capitals defenseman that got it last year? Because he 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 did a he's he had a breakout everyone. year, and which yeah. was they they struggled towards the end of the season there. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, good on them. So I got a couple more things here. Drysital says the Edmonton defense is uh, the reason for their surge up the standings lately. Okay, I think I've seen. I I think it's an improvement. I, I agree. I think it's an improvement. I figured you would agree with me on that. But Bear, Bear's I, I having think, a breakout year. I think the reason, yeah, but not defensively, offensively. True, true, true. true. That, and that, that was actually, it's funny that, that I just said that because I meant to mention it last time. They were talking about it on a bunch of outlets and news sources like for sports that they're like, everyone's misconstruing that Barry is playing really well and thinking that his, he's not even making any difference defensively for them. He's just scoring goals. But anyways... I think I, I agree. I think the biggest reason, though, for their um, their their <clears throat> them surging up the standings is mostly because of the Leafs playing bad. I mean, th- since the Leafs beat them and and they went on that that hot streak, the Leafs did not Edmonton. Uh, the Leafs have fallen off and left the standings completely open for everybody to move up. Right, Winnipeg, uh, Winnipeg, and Edmonton are currently two points behind. And yep. the Leafs barely beat Ottawa in the last game. But it's still up to Edmonton and the rest of the teams to play well. I agree. But we had this argument before. And I think the other, f- it's four teams, right? Yeah. The Montreal isn't playing well. And the other three teams are not good, in my opinion. Not good at all. Like Calgary has moments of, of looking really good, but they're not good. And uh, Vancouver, as much as they have solid pieces, they're not going to pull it off this season. So, and Ottawa's Ottawa. Well, I mean, like, uh, Vancouver was able to get some pieces in the last maybe week or two. Yeah, who did they get them from? Uh, I know, <laughs> true, but, I mean, it's it's not like it, they're not going to help. They're going to no, help yeah, in terms I think of so the too. depth. Uh, you know, I think uh, you're right about Calgary. It's, it's crazy. Like, they have moments of greatness, and then all of a sudden they just taper off. Like, um like crazy. Ottawa's been consistently um, pushing the other teams. Like they, 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 they play hard. I'll give them credit. Uh, Ottawa plays hard. Uh, fortunately, um, you know, they just, they got a 
a lot of development to go th- uh, to go through uh, before they take the next step. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, the Leafs have finally um, made some adjustments and they've made decisions of something that sh- they should have made a decision on like maybe a week ago and that is not play their starting goalie. Oh, well, I'll say that for Leafs talk. No, but I'm just saying. Like, I know, I agree with I'm you. I'm just going through the whole division. Yeah, I'm just going through the whole division. And I think and, you're and correct I, so far. Yeah, and, and uh, Winnipeg, Winnipeg is... Um, Winnipeg's playing great, man. Winnipeg's playing. You know, going back to the Edmonton thing, I don't. Is it true that Barry is not even leading the team in, in points right now? It's Darnell Nurse. And I, if it is, Darnell Nurse is having a breakout year right now because. Yeah, like, he brings grit. Larson, he brings toughness. The biggest problem I have with Nurse is he doesn't really have self control. Like, he does a lot of really stupid things, but yeah. he's a good, solid defensive. And I really wish the Leafs pulled off that trade for him. There was a uh, I can't remember. Yeah, who it was. I remember that rumor. Yeah. I remember that rumor. That would have been uh, crazy. He would have been perfect for us, <clears throat> especially with the team we have now. Yeah, that would have been crazy. I mean, when you look at their defensive uh, uh, lines, I guess for pairings on Edmonton, they're they're pretty damn good, man. They are pretty damn good. I, I mean, it's surprisingly, uh, you know. They don't really play that well defensively, but that's it's just you know like what is it? They got Larson, they got Darnell Nurse, Barry, uh, Russell. I'm missing somebody. Um, Ooh, I, I know exactly who you're talking about too. And it's just uh, okay. Anyways, forget it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know. I I I'll I'll remember it later. But I agree, and I I think. That that they're they're a pretty solid team. We said that at the beginning of the year. I thought they were a better team than the Leafs on paper, and they would be a, a straight up fight I for did. the Leafs. And but now we're seeing it; it's working out. And um, I, I, let's just see where that goes. Winnipeg is like Hellebuck is just the savior of that team. Yes, he he's so fantastic. And I don't know; I haven't checked it in a long time, so I'm not gonna don't quote me on this. But they were top three most shots against for the first half of this season so far. And yeah, I would be shocked if he doesn't win the Vesna. I would too. But then, okay, so I'm going to segue into this right now because this was a, a thing I wanted to talk about and this was perfect. So Vasilevsky just lost a 12-game winning streak uh, to Dallas the other day. Okay? And I thought in my head, it has to be between Hellebuck and him right now for the Vesna. Yeah, but you know the biggest difference between the two? Um, it's expected that Tampa is going to win this many games. You know I mean? agree, because but the team that they have so good. He is very good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. This uh, is not one of those things where you can say the team is so good and that's why Vasilevsky is good. No, he's so good. He is very good, but the team is very good too. Yes, I agree. When you compare the two, it's fair. Like Tampa should be winning these many games. You know what I mean? I think skill wise, it's it's a toss up, but I think. If you're going to go off merits Defe- from just no, this season, it's Hellebuck. Yes, because honestly, if you're going to compare the uh, the two teams, they both teams are gifted. Oh, I meant just goalies. I meant just goalies. No, but I'm talking about just the teams. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. terms of the teams, like both teams are gifted offensively, but Tampa's got the better defense. Way better. Appearance. Tampa yeah. has so top, def- top this five. This is the defense. reason why I would give the edge to, to Hellebuck. I would say, yeah, just off the merits of this season and the stats of this season, Hellebuck deserves it. But I think if you put them in like just based on their own personal skills, they're pretty equal. They're probably the top two goalies in the NHL. Yeah. Um, Unless Campbell gets like shots for the rest of the year. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take that any day. So continuing on the streak talk. <clears throat> Buffalo, 16-game losing streak, baby. What the hell's going on? And they fired their coach, like, what, last week? Yeah. Uh, Out of all all the rookies that they have drafted over the last couple years, we had this talk on another episode. Um, They only have one person performing, like, out of all, like, their high draft picks. And I believe it was Middlestat. Dude. Or Reinhardt. I would be surprised if Jack Eichel is still with that team next year. Oh, that guy. What's the guy's name that was supposed to be huge? Oh, my Jack gosh. Jack Eichel? No. Dil- uh, Co- Jack Eichel's injured, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Are you Dylan, Dil- I think it's Cozen. Dylan Cozen. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, he, but, but he, he also had a high draft pick defenseman, too. 
Yeah, well, he's they're playing good, the two defensemen, Rasmus, uh, Darlene, and... Uh, <laughs> they're Rista. losing all the time. <laughs> I know, but the team is not good, right? What are you going to do? They're just not playing well. You have Oak, uh, Oak Poso, who's always injured, and like he hasn't been a factor for like three years, just eating cap. E- Eric Stahl... Okay, so that's a perfect segue. Let's go. Eric Stahl, not playing that well. Uh, Eric Stahl, Montreal Canadiens are the front runners to pick up Eric Stahl. Um. I that, there was that was to pick up Taylor Hall like at the beginning of the yeah, season. Yeah, no? there, that's that was actually like breaking news today that Montreal was uh, number one to get Eric Stahl, and I think he's a good fit for that team. I think he's exactly what they need. How so? He's a solid centerman. He's a good leader to to carry those young guys, and he can still put up points if you put him in the right position. The the, the way the reason I feel he could play with Corey Perry, I guess yeah. Uh, the the reason that I don't like his fit on the Leafs would be because there's just nowhere to put him. You have to remove talent to put him there. On Montreal, you can easily make space for a guy like him. The only problem is Montreal's facing the same cap crunch that the Leafs are, so I don't know what they have to give up to get that. Yeah, I don't think the Leafs need more skill. I think they need more grit at this yeah, point. Yeah, and I don't think Stahl brings you that. I, more I, toughness. I, I stick with the Felino and Paul Mary. I'm back. Felino would be awesome. I'll stick with those two. Um, okay, so I'm jumping off this to the last thing that I have. Florida put Anton Strawman on waivers and I know he's wow. getting older, but that's a huge pickup for, and I guarantee you he's going to end up on a team like Pittsburgh or Washington on like a, a dirt, 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 cheap veteran contract, like 700 K he's going to just join a team to win a cup and it's going to be for dirt cheap. Good on them. I yeah, mean, you know, good depth player. I mean, he, he, he played well for Tampa. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's a possibility that he could do it again for, mm-hmm. you know, you, you cut his minutes a little bit and you just, uh, you could be effective for, for those short. Uh, Florida overpaid him. That was the problem. Plays. Yeah, yeah. Florida yeah. way overpaid him. But he'll be a great fit on a team pushing for a cup that can get him on a veteran's minimum. So uh, mm-hmm. good on that. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything? Yeah. I, when you mentioned uh, – when we're talking about Washington for like that one second, I just yep. remembered Ovechkin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he just passed uh, Mike I Gardner. Know he, I know he passed Phil Esposito and he did that the little tribute to 718. him. Seven eighteen. Cool. Seven eighteen. Yes, that was pretty cool. You uh, think he'll? Uh, you think he'll do it? Like I said before, I think I was the doubter of all, of the group. I still don't know. He doesn't. The way he's been playing this season, yeah, he's still scoring goals, but he's not scoring at that pace anymore at best he's i think still scoring though i know but at best i think he's like a 30 goal guy now and he needs to score like 40 every season for the rest of his career to get that no he doesn't because if he's gonna play for the next five years he scores 30 goals for the next five years he'll catch up how much does he need he needs like 170 yeah yeah, yeah. so how many goals is that he's not gonna score 50 30 60 90 uh, 120, 150. 120? So he needs six more seasons of 30 goals. Is okay, yeah, but you know what? I don't know the if he can do that. The thing with that Ovechkin is that he doesn't play as physical as he used to like five years ago, and uh, he really tries to keep fit. If he can do that, it's a possibility. I would it's say that he he's you know? what I would consider like the LeBron James of hockey, not in like skill sense, but in terms of like physical upkeeping. Like he puts yeah. so much effort in the off season to keeping himself ready to play hockey. Yeah, uh, who else is he? So now he's at seven eighteen or seven twenty. I can't remember which one it was. He's got to pass. Yeah, he he, he has three people in three, sight. Three people. Yeah, hold on, I'll bring it up right now. So you like, you entertain yeah, the obviously- fans. The obvious, obviously, it's Gretzky's one. Uh, Marcel Dion is the second one. Is is Yager the third? I believe so. Because I know uh, Dion is seven thirty one. Here, I got it right now. I'm always ready for these. So you got Gretzky eight ninety four, Gordy Howe eight oh one, Yager seven sixty six. Oh, Gordy Howe, jeez. Brett Hall seven forty one, Marcel Dion seven thirty one. And Ovechkin has 721. So Ovechkin, I think, can pass Dion this season. He needs he needs 11 goals, but I don't think he's going to catch up to Brett Hall. He's not scoring 22 goals for the rest of the season. No, I don't think so. No, yes. no, no. that's that's going to be another call. That's going to be next season. 
So yeah. sorry, how many people were ahead of him? Five. I guarantee five, by the five. end of his career, I guarantee he comes in second at least. He's gonna pass Gordy Howe. And he's oh, gonna yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna do it in far less games than any of these guys took to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In definitely. a harder no, era to score goals. So def- good on definitely, him. Definitely, definitely. Good on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's gonna pass Gordy Howe for sure. Um sorry, you said second is Gordy Howe? Gordy Howe, Yager, Hall, Dion. And you know what's funny? I talk about this sometimes on Instagram with random accounts, but it's crazy how overlooked Marcel Dion gets in modern hockey, how pe- kids don't even know who he is. The guy has 731 goals. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? Get out of yeah. here. He played on a team that, that wasn't... Uh, at that time, sucked. At the time, yeah. yeah. I That's mean, true. It, it I didn't get popular until Gretzky went there. Yeah, I agree. 100%. I have no arguments there. All right, I don't I'm, have anything else. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know who your favorite goal scorer is in the comments below. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.